Lord. A man dangerous enough to bring Satan to his knees, but selfless enough to make God himself raise an eyebrow. How did this come to pass? Well, it all began at a very special birthday party for a very special young lady. Surprise! What is all this? It's your birthday, Kenzie. So? You've never been to a birthday party? No. Oh, like not even growing up? I went to the School of the Americas since kindergarten. We didn't really do birthday parties. But you celebrated Christmas? I don't have to explain myself to you. Oh, Kinsey, this is going to be so much fun. Zinjai made a cake, Jane Austen is here, we'll play some games. What sort of games? <laughs> so you celebrate birthdays by trafficking with spirits? It's spooky and fun. It's a bunch of letters. It's tradition. Every slumber party has to involve a spirit board. Slumber party? How's it work? We ask it a question, and the spirit of the board will reveal the answer. How? Yeah, someone pushes the pointy thing to wherever they want. Wait, wait, wait. Can we go back to you and your slumber parties? No time. All right. Everyone put their hands on the cursor. Cursor? I feel the magic already. All right. Will the president slash god emperor for life ever choose a partner to reign alongside them? <laughs> no. Ooh, someone's getting married. Shut up, Matt. Who will tame the president's wild heart? <laughs> what are you guys trying to spell? I'm not moving it. That's the spirit, Kinsey. I'm serious. I'm not moving it either. Neither am I. Jezebel? Who the fuck is... <laughs> Where'd you get the board? I was going through Zinyak's artifact collection and found it there. Who did it belong to? Alistair Crowley? Jesus oh, Christ. Um, guys, I think it's laughing at us. Fuck this. I think you're a smart enough piece of wood to see where this is going. Now, are you ready to cooperate? That's more like it. You think we can trust it? It's not like we got a lot of options. So what's the plan? We mount up and go in after the boss? No, I do. No sense in what's left of humanity walking right into a death trap. Someone's gotta live to tell the story. That's a stupid plan, Johnny. I'm leaving you in charge. Hell of a plan, Johnny! Are you serious? I'm coming too. Are you kidding me? How do you plan to come back? Yeah, I try not to sweat the details. You need someone with you that does. No. It's my birthday. Fine. Alright then. You know where my friend is? True to its word, the spirit board opened up another portal and sent Johnny and Kinsey screaming into hell. behind this, I know it. Ultor and the Saints haven't been enemies in years. You really think he's responsible? You don't know him like I do. The boss put him through a window for a reason. The reason was the boss was kind of fucking crazy back then. That's a fair point. You know how much easier this would be if we just found a car? You know how much easier this would be if you just gave me a second? You know the drill. Alright, now how are we gonna find the Ultor building? Biggest building down here? giant altar sign on it. I don't think this is a problem. I'll buy that. Look at us. Kinsey, Kensington, and Johnny Gat driving together on a birthday adventure. Are you always this excited? Generally, I'm a misanthrope. I get it. So this is hell. Not as bad as I thought. It kind of reminds me of Steelport. So, what's the plan? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna shoot him in the face unless he gives us the boss back. What if Dean doesn't have the boss? I'll probably still shoot him in the face.
Welcome to hell. Shouldn't you have a receptionist? Such is the plight of eternal damnation. I have a feeling you didn't come here to catch up. Let's talk in my office. Not even death could stop the enterprising Vogel, who wasted no time in setting up an Altor branch in the bowels of hell. Dane was eager to fill Johnny in on the ever-shifting politics of land rights in the underworld. But real estate mattered little to Johnny, who only cared where his friend was. Where'd you put the president? I've been trying to explain that I didn't take them. Bullshit! You expect me to believe you just happen to be the first thing we see in hell? Maybe it's just me, but your thank you sounds more like an accusation. That's probably because he plans to kill you. Okay. I get the trust issues. Can I show you something? The pieces all came together. The President had caused more chaos and destruction than any other in human history. It was only natural that Satan would want them to marry his daughter. They needed a plan. And Johnny had one. I'm gonna shoot the devil in the face. I think you might be skipping some details. No, I said in the face. I like the commitment, but you gotta find a way to get close enough to him in the first place. When's the wedding? I'll just show up and... and then you'll shoot him in the face. Sorry, but it's a little more complicated than that. These things are tied to the soul. You won't be able to enter without one. So how do we get one? You get his attention. I know some places that are of particular value to the father of the bride. You hit those, you'll get your shot. Wait, why would Satan give out an invitation for destroying his stuff? Oh, he won't, but it should piss him off enough to get him to attack Johnny personally. Either the devil kills Gat and Ultor gets the construction contracts to rebuild what was destroyed, or Johnny kills Satan and I'll have to pay less taxes. It's pretty win-win. That's why you're helping us? To make more money in hell? Hell's what you make of it, sweetie. Works for me. What you got? All right. Satan had entrusted the day-to-day -day running of Hell to five Archdukes, and Dane knew how to find them all. But beyond that, not everyone in Hell was content to go along with Satan's status quo. There were others who shared Dane's ambition for power, and the Altor Mogul knew that the key to unseating Satan lie in gaining their aid. But before Johnny set out to wage war against the Prince of Darkness, Dane had one final gift, an artifact that he had spent fortunes on. Lucifer's Cracked Halo. This holy relic granted Johnny the majestic wings of the Morning Star. However, he still needed help in learning how to use them. All right, you got me out in the sticks. Now what? Would it kill you to show a little excitement? You're about to experience angelic flight, for Christ's sake. Dane. Someone needs a nap. Just collect some soul clusters and power up the halo. You'll be flying around in no time. All right, let's start slow. Try to jump over to that next island. Also, the longer you charge your wings before jumping, the further you'll go. Hey, you didn't fuck it up. Good job. Now get up that cliff. Don't worry, if something looks too high, just keep on jumping off the wall. Remember to charge your jumps if you want to get up the cliff faster. Let's get you back to the old tour building. I want to run through all the stuff you can do to hurt Satan. Sure thing. See you soon. Here's the deal. If you want some face time with Satan, you need to get his attention. Now, Satan hates being challenged, so anything you do to undermine his control is good. Fraud, mayhem, shooting demons in the face, anything. You can keep track of Satan's wrath with this handy meter. Get it high enough and you'll be having drinks with Big Red in no time. I've compiled a list of shit to do, so take a look and do whatever sounds fun. Oh, one more thing. We have some potential allies down here. Trust me, you want to impress them. There's lots of ways to get Satan's attention, but we should never forget the class. Rampant fucking murder. Pride is a sin the Devil's Army has in spades, so if you want to pick a fight, you can bet your ass they're coming in droves.
found one of the marshalling grounds. Satan uses these things to arm and send off armies to crush his enemies. If you convert all the control stones, we should be able to use them to get around hell even faster. Predictably, there's a terrifying arch demon protecting the marshalling grounds, so it's gonna be a fight. Don't worry, though. Well, maybe you should worry. It's a scary fucking demon, but whatever. You'll figure it out. Are you gonna show up or what? I got a schedule to keep. Try harder than that, see? Soul's Orientation Guide, Chapter 38. Imps. Little bundles of pure sin. These adorable mischief makers serve as perfect pets or slave labor. Abandoned ship! We've been boarded! Get these damn things off my ship! I got a bit of treasure in that chest over there. The weapon you find inside may help with a little imp problem. Ooh. I summoned these imps to serve as my crew. I forgot what a handful they could be. Once aboard, they wouldn't listen to their cotton. They ran amok in the bowels of the ship. Hey, it's okay to drop the pirate voice. What pirate voice would that be? Wow. Zenyak's destruction of Earth had a profound impact on the afterlife. To heaven, it was a logistical nightmare. St. Peter's meticulous nature drove purgatory wait times to unbearable levels. Meanwhile, in Hell, where souls in pain were used as currency, it created a new era of prosperity for the wickedly enterprising. This economic boom resulted in the coffers of Hell to be overflowing, which in turn piqued the interest of the most notorious man that sailed the Seven Seas. Long had Blackbeard been a thorn in Satan's side, robbing tax collectors on a semi-regular basis. But the promise of an immeasurable fortune drove him to be even bolder. An arrangement was reached. Blackbeard would provide information on strategic targets in exchange for a share of the profit. 
Johnny, who was interested in murder, not money, happily agreed. I grant ye the ability to summon my crew whenever they're needed. We're standing in a parking garage. I don't like it either, but Cinepool isn't giving us many options. I can't believe they tried to force us out. I can't believe you forgot the mimosas. I think we have bigger problems. I don't think you realize how much I love mimosas. I can't help but notice that people are trying to kill you. Yeah, they're really big on that here. What did you do? Is now really a good time? We can wait until we're done shooting people. Well, I'm great at multitasking. Remember when we offered you a deal on that airplane and you responded by killing everyone? Yeah. It's like that, but worse. You gotta try harder than that, Sam. Hey, Viola. Thought you should know that Kinsey misses you. Really? That's so sweet. Who's Kinsey? You remember Kinsey. She was that hacker that Matt Miller hated. Isn't she crazy? You know, she really grows on you. He didn't have a tie. Let's get you two back to Dane. Hooray! After being reunited in Hell, Kiki and Viola wasted no time in doing what they do best. Facilitate the running of businesses. However, the De Winter sisters' success did not sit well with other would-be power players in Hell. The sisters' operations all came under attack at once, forcing them on the run. Soon, the twins found themselves on the receiving end of an offer they couldn't refuse. After all, it was better to own one-fifth of something than to be dead. Watson, William Shakespeare, humanity's greatest playwright, and hell's most diabolical purveyor of entertainment, looks on as a brave mortal on an Orphean quest enters. The bard's interest is piqued. And he looks to test his visitor's mettle. The masked tragedies were used to enemies cowering as they approached. But soon they realized that they faced a foe with courage and nobility. Traits uncommon in the tires of perdition. The inciting incident resolved. The time had come for rising action! The battle raged on below, and as bullets and blood flew, the bard arched a curious eyebrow. Could this mortal be the exact thing that Shakespeare needed? The conflict resolved. Shakespeare eagerly awaited meeting the champion that dispatched so many of his men. Undoubtedly, they were here for the Bard's aid. And while happy endings were not a thing found in Hell, Shakespeare always had a soft spot for comedies. In the land of the living, William Shakespeare is regarded as one of the most prolific playwrights of all time. However, to the denizens of Hell, the Bard is seen in a far different light. After selling his soul for fame and adoration, Shakespeare served in Hell as Satan's spy master general. In doing his duty, Shakespeare would punish the souls he was investigating by forcing them to perform in grotesque passion plays for Satan's amusement. But in a Twelfth Night-esque twist, Shakespeare found himself living a double life. While he projected an image of cruelty, his heart was as soft as Jezebel's. In secret, he would tutor her on the classics and act out the works of his mortal days. When Satan found out, he cast Shakespeare out of the palace, believing that the poet would be tormented by the populace of Hell, far out of Jezebel's sight. But Satan had not counted on the bard's cunning. Embracing his persona of master torturer, Shakespeare and his followers, the tragedies, took root in the entertainment district, biding their time for revenge. So Shakespeare called forth the Deus Ex Machina to bestow our protagonist with the arcane power of Force Storm. Long had Shakespeare conspired with Blackbeard, 
For it was the Bard who provided the famed pirate with a means to steal Lucifer's halo. Return to my castle, so we may plot our next steps in proper surrounds. Johnny led Vlad back to his castle, which since his incarceration became a haven for frat parties and squatters. But the systematic impaling of trespassers would have to wait. Vlad was a man of his word, and was eager to provide intel that could aid in hobbling Satan's armies. Satan didn't have much time to react to the war Gat was waging, because at home, Jezebel was waging a war of her own. I don't love them! You think I care? If you started acting like a father, you would. I'm looking after your best interest. You don't care about my happiness! This is about you! If you just stop telling- You will marry that saint, and I won't hear another word! I won't do it! You think? Because you're my daughter, you think that you're above it all. But schemes are currently in motion. Your choice, be a wife or be a thrall. They say the devil's in the details, and I have some more for you. Celestial light doesn't shine a ray here. Happy endings are through. I'm giving you away! Your blood will not save you! My hand will be cruel if you disobey! You belong to me! Never! I'm sick of perdition, so tired of tradition, but now my time has come to go break away, to live for today, to stand out beneath the sun. I know there has to be some way for me to be free, just living a life that's far from the strife and torturous pain. Some place that's far from here and not awash with fear. Oh God, I can't wait to cast off this hate. I want to find love. There's a big wide world for me to explore. So many things that I don't know. Like would I like ice cream? How do I feel about cats? And is night played my new favorite show? <sighs> but until that time, I'm stuck in this hell. A relentless tempest of rage. Surrounded by guards. Betrothed by my father, trapped inside this gilded cage. It's not working, Kinsey. You don't know that, Johnny. I'm tearing this place apart, but Satan doesn't even seem to... We didn't come this far to fail. You think I'm giving up? We have one less place to go. What if it doesn't work? The bus is counting on us. You think I don't know? How do I burn down a city that's baptized in fire? How do I kill off an army that's dead? Time's slipping away now, and the best plan we've got is just put one inside Satan's head. If roles were reversed, God, I know they'd save me, but all my solutions involve murder spree. You have to stay the course and kill without remorse. Yeah, that sounds fun, but what has that done? We're still where we stand. The day 
isn't over yet Our sun's not begun to set No matter how small The wings of a fly can create hurricanes Johnny Gat Hope, I feel hope For the first time I've ever in my life Gat is the name that cuts through my father like a knife. The seed of rebellion, it grows like a weed. And someone so violent is just what I need. There's no turning back now, the die has been cast. This sinner has found her saint, I'll be free at last. The people, the music, it waits up above. I know I'll be happy. When I find love, I know I'll be happy. When I find love. Good job bringing more people into our little I Hate Satan club. Why don't you take a rest? Not interested. I got more shit to roll. I'm just saying, I got a lead on where you can find a very nice chair. I just told it has guns. I'm in. Ah! Sure, I wanted love emotes since I was four. When I arrived to hell, my reputation preceded me, and Satan was quick to court my aid. He promised me a new body, a fiefdom, and a castle in exchange for loyalty. I happily agreed. I trained his army, maintained the peace, and ferreted out Satan's enemies. But all of my loyalty meant nothing when I committed the unforgivable sin of failure. I demand retribution for the violation of my home. Scour the slums for those responsible. Dante said that the deepest circle of hell is reserved for betrayers. And as such, it should come as no surprise that Troy Bradshaw found himself in the depths of hell. However, in the case of Mr. Bradshaw, Legal Lee was confident that he could find a way to gain the system. After all, Troy betrayed the Saints because of his obligations to the Stillwater PD. And later, Troy turned his back on his fellow policemen because of a sense of obligation he had to the Saints. He was a man conflicted, and while the road to hell is paved with good intentions, Ultimately, even in perdition, it would be cruel to punish a man for eternity for doing what they sincerely believe to be the right thing. You might want to swing by the old tour building. There's someone here you need to meet. On my way. Emboldened by the power of song, Jezebel set out to find the one man that could save her from her impending nuptials. Fortunately for her, Johnny's trail of destruction wasn't too hard to follow. One night with any lover, but you have to punch a panda. Do you do it? Ooh. Good question. Um, Mr. Gat? Who are you? Well, I'm a... We're not doing that again. Oh, okay. I'm Jezebel. Good to know. What are you doing? Threatening you. You're not marrying the president. I don't want to marry the president. Well, that was easier than I thought. My dad's making me do it. What now? Now I'm holding you hostage. You don't need to do this. Yeah, that's what hostages always say. No, like, you really don't need to do this. I'm here to help you. Yeah, but I already have the gun drawn, so, uh... Are you kidding me? Maybe. I'm not sure yet. I'm kind of winging it. Can you wing it without the gun? Yeah, it's a comfort thing. Not for me. What do you want? For you to put the gun down. Get used to disappointment. You sound like my father. What? 
He's always telling me that life is about misery, not happiness. That dreams only exist to make people forget about their own mediocrity. Man, that's depressing. Being the devil's daughter sucks. What do you want? I want to punch my dad in the face. We're gonna get along just fine. Of course, Jezebel was speaking metaphorically, but Johnny didn't notice. Jezebel was eager to help Johnny in any way she could, and vowed to find a way to sneak him into the palace. Johnny frowned at the seemingly arbitrary amount of time required for Jezebel to find a way to sneak him in. But he accepted the fact that without traditional missions, this was the best way to further the story. I know this is petty, but Vlad won't stop bitching about some frat boys that tossed his castle when he was locked up. Personally, I got nothing against poli-sci majors with popped collars, but as a general rule, I like to keep people with nicknames like the Impaler happy. It'll really keep things going smoothly with Vlad if you could show up to one of the frat's pledge games and smack him around a bit. Who knows, maybe you'll make some friends. Isn't that what college is really about? Thanks to you, my name is feared once more. I am in your debt. Jezebel's plan worked flawlessly, and when the time was right, she made her way to the bowels of the palace. But while she successfully managed to breach the castle walls to let Johnny in, she did not go unnoticed. Put that toy down, Mr. Gat. And why would I do that? Oh, because if you don't, I'll break Jezebel's beautiful neck. She's your daughter. I'll say something kind at her funeral. Drop it. I knew it. It's you. It's always been you. Yeah, well, what you talking about? You love her. I really don't. You love her! Ah, Johnny, my boy! I misjudged you! You've shown loyalty by walking into hell. You've shown cunning by robbing me. You've shown brutality by killing my generals. And now you're willing to sacrifice yourself for my daughter. You're the man who should be my son. <laughs> Defiant to the end. Now listen, boy. You've proven your spirit, but don't presume to push me further. Let him go. Not now, Jesse. The men are talking. Dad, let him go. Look how you inspire her. She wants to kill me. You bring out the best in her. I'll offer you a deal, Mr. Gat. Marry my daughter, and I'll allow your companion to leave with the President's soul. It's your choice. You know where to find me. The President's soul was within Johnny's grasp. All he had to do was marry Satan's daughter. The time had come for the black wedding that would unite Johnny and Jezebel as Hell's new power couple. The tabloids were already calling them Johnny Bell, but Johnny had something different in mind. Hey, Satan! You want to get out of here? I can't believe that worked. Occam's razor. Playtime is over, Mr. Gat. Save them if you can. I love weddings.
touch me. Admirable attempt. <laughs> Strike me, Satan! Gazelle hunts the lion. I'm not. Lost the will to fight. Enough. And like that, the battle had ended. Satan could no longer suffer the indignity of being beaten by a mortal and disobeyed by his daughter, and so he banished them from perdition. But still, all was not well. That was a direct order from your captain! You're worse than Pierce! Trivia night is sacred! You don't get to quit just because you know fuck all about pop culture. Who knows the name of the Nightblade episode where they introduced Nightbladeette? It was called The Meaning of Reconciliation and it was directed by Kim Stein. I can't believe Asha sleeps with you. I can't believe you don't. Boss, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. What is this place? Whoa, 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 who the fuck is that? Her name's Jezebel. She's the devil's daughter. Pierce is gonna have a heart attack. Nah, she likes to sing. Pierce will dig her. I don't think... Can you rock the narrator from Joseph? Yeah. She'll be fine. Guys, where's Johnny? Our hero had not yet returned to the mortal coil, for he was waylaid by none other than God himself. I have a situation. Look, man, I just really want to go home. I owe you. Huh? Zinyak hastened the apocalypse. St. Peter's a good guy, bless his heart, but he was processing souls way too slowly. With the destruction of Earth, Satan had the numbers to storm heaven. All he needed was the President of the United States to lead them. What, you think I couldn't do it? No, I think you wouldn't do it. Aisha's up here. I want to see her. Slow down, buddy. I said that I owe you, and I'll make good on that. But I want you to know your options. Johnny realized that this was his one chance to make it into heaven. He had to take it. <laughs> 